Erica McGinnis. Thank you for joining us, Erica. Yeah, no problem. Hello, everybody. So uh, I was just telling the girls, we're actually the same age. You probably look better than me, but you're, we are the same age. Uh, we went to school in North End. You went to Hansworth. I was at SCA. Um, you, you were one of the best players in the province coming out of high school. And the thing I, I admired about your game is you consistently got better throughout your university experience, which I thought was really cool. And then what I've also told them is, you know, we've done like Kim Smith, we've done Teresa Gabriel, we've done big, you know, Nio, we've done big names. And now what we're doing is we've filtered it to, to big names that have also done stuff after university that is like in the business world. And, and I, I've heard you've done some great things. So let's, let's get started. Let's go all the way back to the very beginning. Uh, tell us when you got started playing basketball. Um, I probably started... Uh, in grade two, um, they had the, the, the Delbrick Basketball League um, and Junior Grizzlies back in the day when Vancouver uh, had a professional team. Um, yeah, that's how, how I started. And I, I uh, was lucky at the time, uh, at the time I'm, you know, in high school, I don't know if I thought I was lucky, but my, my dad was coaching. And so he kind of naturally got me into the game and I ended up watching uh, going to a bunch of his games where he was coaching older girls and, and just was around the sport from a really young age. Yeah, for sure. So you got started late, so that's good. Um, <laughs> so he brought you in. You got to watch a lot of games. He was coaching at West Band back then? Yeah, he was coaching at um, the predecessor to West Band, to Hillside Secondary, but yes, essentially West Band Cooper Secondary. So what's cool about that is it, it, you got a lot of opportunity to actually understand the game before you got to play quite a bit of the game which is which is big for some of the girls you know it's one of the things about being a coach's kid is you get a lot of that experience so then you get to high school tell us about you know what it was like when you started out in high school you know how your teams did you know what what you kind of remember back then um I think you know high school uh I remember it being a very challenging time um which I think you know in hindsight you don't necessarily realize it when you're in it, um, but our but our teams our teams were good. We were at, at Hansworth was always a good school on the North Shore, uh, but never provincial contenders. So before I played um, junior basketball in grade nine and ten, and or at grade nine, and then I played senior basketball in ten, eleven, and twelve. And prior to our run uh, on the senior team, I think the best we had done in the province is eleven. Um, and then when we were there, uh, in one of the years, we came fifth. So that was a big accomplishment for our team, but we were never, I saw a catch on, on here too. We were never uh, <laughs> with, <laughs> at the likes of, of uh, her team in terms of contending for the provincial title. So uh, you graduated and then you ended up at UBC. What, 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 do you remember, take us back to what it was like for you to make that decision. Um, did you have many... What were your options? How did you come up with UBC? What was that like? Yeah, so I played I played on the provincial basketball team, and with that, got to go down to the states for some tournaments and had um, had interest from from schools. But a lot of the schools that were looking at me even in the states were really far away. So, uh, it, you know, down in um, New Mexico and Texas and areas that I I'd never been to and and would have a hard time um, imagining. And then I was lucky that I had interest both from SFU and UBC, two local schools. Um, my parents went to UBC uh, as a kid growing up. I always went out to the UBC games um, and, and I had, I think I had that nostalgia feeling going out there uh, from going out to the campus with my parents. So I ended up deciding to, to go to, to UBC. Um, and, and start my basketball career career there. And I think I think at the end of the day too, like growing up in Vancouver, I love Vancouver. I knew I wanted to live in Vancouver. Uh, and part of me, the logic was if I went to school in Vancouver, you know, maybe I would meet, uh, maybe I would meet my spouse and they'd want to be in Vancouver and I could I could fulfill that uh, that path of of being able to 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 raise my family here down the road too. Well, it's important. I mean, planning stuff and actually like having some foresight to do something like that, it worked out pretty good. So that, that, uh, that's a good thing. So one of the things like we were saying earlier is, is continually throughout your university career, 
you you seem to constantly keep getting better, and then you you ended up your career as the all-time leading scorer in UBC history, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what what type of prep outside of regular practice? Like, what was your do you remember like a routine that you would be doing? Like, what were you trying to get accomplished in the off season before before practice, after practice, during the season? Like, what was that like? Yeah, good question. I I think um, I think early on I in my basketball career, I learned the value of, of preparation and how, for, for me, I always got better not at practice, at team practice. Like the time for me to actually get better as an individual and improve my game was really supposed to something that I did on my, my own time um, in the gym by myself or with a teammate, uh, really working on our skill, my skills. So uh, that carried, off, carried on to university. Like there was when I joined the team, um, I, all I wanted to do was play and get playing time. And uh, coming in in, in, a fir- in your first year, there's a really big gap in, in age and you're par- playing with, you know, you've gone from playing with girls to, to women and, you know, who can be five years older than you and you're competing for that playing time. And it was just so, I was so determined to put in the effort and the work outside practice to try and break the, the lineup and start to get some minutes because um, that was what I was there to do. And, and that's when I had the most fun was when I was on the court. So uh, early on, that was just a big focus of mine, just getting into the gym and finding time and, and also getting to know, you know, getting out with coach Deb so she could get a feel for who I was as a player and, and my work ethic and what I could do. Um, Cause you know, it's a when you're starting off uh, playing for a new coach, it's it's a, a bit of a two-way street that way, and you want to make sure that you give them an opportunity to um, to figure out who you are and what you are are all about. So early on, was was keen to spend as much time with her in the gym as I could. So it's two huge points there. One was you didn't start off with much, so you needed to earn it. What was it like being a freshman, probably for the first time in your life, not playing much? Yeah, it was it was a, a big adjustment. So in high school, I played uh, at hands with my dad, was my coach, um, and you, you know naturally, in I was a starter from grade ten onwards. I in high school too, it's very common that you know if, if you can play forty minutes a game, and that being quite normal, you can be on the court the whole time. Whereas in university, that's uh, there was very few players that racked up that kind of minutes consistently throughout the season so so that was a uh, a big that would have been a big adjustment um in the in the first uh first step and and then going from a, a place where they're your the girls on the team the women on the team were all all very talented all all had different strengths um all hungry for that playing time so it was it was just way more competitive than um than your high school team but but more similar to my provincial team and, and some of the club teams that I played for, it was the same type of thing where you were, you were fighting for those minutes. You then brought up something very important that I try to convince kids to do every year, uh, and that's build a relationship with their coach. Very few kids actually think that's important, and they kind of like, oh, well, they don't like me, or I don't like them, or whatever. Taking a proactive approach and actually going out and trying to build a relationship with your with, with your coach is very important from what I've seen the kids that do that it, it creates a better experience both on the court and off the court because you create a better lasting relationship tell us a little bit about that what what's uh what's that been like yeah I, I think uh you know going and going into that relationship with the belief that your coach wants what's best for you like I think there um there's instances and in we've seen players and you can think of I've had teammates where and it's same with teachers, like where you feel like the teacher's out to get you, you feel you, you have folks, girls and, and that feel that way about their coach. And um, often uh, it's a really good life skill to learn because often it comes down to miscommunication. So it's, it is something that if you, if you give your coach the benefit of the doubt and you go and try and put yourself out there, um, you can give them a, a, a better perspective from where you're coming from and, and also learn more from where they're coming from. But it, it is, it's, a, it's a relationship. Uh, you know, Coach Deb and I uh, definitely, you know, didn't necessarily, it's, we bumped heads um, quite a few times, but that's, that's all part of it. And it would have been, you know, I, you trust that, 
that they're coming at it and they're not going to write you off and you got to do the same and, and come back to it. And um, there was moments that, you know, for sure I would have been frustrated, um, but that's just natural. And it's, and, uh, and it's something that you kind of have to invest in. So I think putting in that time and spending that time is, is definitely time, uh, time well spent. Fantastic. So how did you pick, we're going to switch to academics now. How did you pick your major? Yeah, so I went, ended up going into commerce uh, or, or business um, and coming out of school, coming out of high school, I knew that I liked sports and I was good at math. And that was the only two things. Uh, so I took prereqs for human kinetics, um, which was more focused around sports. And, and then I took, uh, took math and I ended up doing way better at math than I did at my HKIN courses. So I uh, so looked up what was a, what needed math and commerce and engineering were the two. Engineering course load seemed too intense. So I went down the business route and ended up yeah, just following that path. I, you know, my parents, my dad was a teacher and my mom worked in parks and rec. Um, I didn't know any, I didn't like business was a, a bit of a, seemed almost like a buzzword. I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, but kind of went down the path in terms of what type of school, what kind of schoolwork I like. I was, I, I could not write long essays. Um, and I did not, uh, I did not like, uh, you know, doing those big poetry or anything artsy that there wasn't a right answer for. Uh, whereas going into commerce, um, you know, a lot of, you know, finance, you're coming up to, to a number and instead there were you know, you had assignments throughout the term and regular tests throughout the term, which I really liked. So that was basically the reason I chose um, chose that faculty. Something again, very good information for the girls. So, ladies, one of the things that she's uh, clearly showed us tonight is she's very self-aware of herself. But when I, you know, she wasn't getting the playing time, she had to put in the time. She didn't have a relationship; she had to build a relationship. She she knew she was good at a couple things. She said, "Okay, I got to take these courses. I know I don't like these courses. I'm not taking those courses." That's very important to, to remember, ladies. Now, you graduate from the university, you got to go get a job. What's that like? Put us through that experience. How did you? Where, what were you looking for? What did you end up doing? Where'd you go? Give us the give us a breakdown. Um, well, I think this is one where I didn't appreciate how connected everything was um, when I was in university, and uh, during university, I wasn't as focused on. You know, I liked the schoolwork I was doing, and that was good enough. And I focused on basketball. Uh, but during that, through like through basketball, I made some relationships with uh, supporters of the team and donors. One of the donors uh, was Scott Palmer, um, who was a North Vancouver basketball coach, and he had suggested, "Well, why don't you come and try interning at Ernst and Young, which was the accounting firm he worked at?" Um, and from there, I I uh, went and interned and thought, hey, this isn't so bad. Um, my first summer, it, you know, they didn't really know what to do with me. So I, 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 I distinctly remember that first summer and that I, you know, got to do, I'd get to work and this is my first job in business. Um, I'd, you know, go to my cubicle and, and there, you know, I check my email, there'd be nothing for me to do. And I would do a crossword and then I'd go get a coffee and then I'd come back and walk the office to see if anyone needed help. And, and then I, you know, read the paper and call it a day. And, and I remember thinking, hey, this isn't so bad. Like, I don't know what everybody, you know, what everybody's talking about. Uh, but the following summer, because I was a returning intern, they, they viewed me as, you know, a very strong, experienced intern. And I got pulled on all the jobs and um, really had to learn my stripes or earn my stripes from, uh, from that perspective. But it, 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 I think from your, your question, Anthony, in terms of, going into my career, um, relationships are, are so important. And even the relationships you're making now with, uh, with your basketball coaches, with your parents, friends, with uh, your, if you are starting to have summer work and who you're working for, like all of that stuff matters and it, um, it will contribute to your reputation and you never know where uh, your, your next job or your dream job or your job after university is going to come from. So um, I think just, you know, always having it the best intentions and, and uh, putting your best, best self forward in whatever experience you're in, it, it, um, it'll line up and it'll help down the road. 
I mean, that's, that's something we've actually, that's a common theme we've had from a lot of the, the players that have come on and talked to the girls, uh, making connections, you know, keeping your, knowing who you, who you know and what they do and, and kind of creating a network for yourself while you're in university. So you worked at Ernst & Young. How long did you work at Ernst & Young for? I worked at Ernst & Young for five years after university. Well, after university, I went and played basketball in the Czech Republic. Um, and I left my job at Ernst & Young to go do that and, and then was able to come back and continue on and, and then work there for five years. And then after that, left Ernst & Young and I've been working at Sequera, uh, where I'm currently at for seven years. Sorry, so you, we worked at Ernst & Young for five years and then you got a job. What's the, what's the new job? Uh, it's in corporate finance. Um, so... The girls don't know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Break, break that down for us. What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Okay, so I'll, I'll, uh, you know, I'll explain it the best I can. Like the, uh, we work in, I work in deals, and why that that is exciting for me is, um, it's project-based and it's also it's also a very competitive industry. It's competitive to win the work um, and win the clients, and then when you're working for uh, a business, it's really competitive and um, intense to close the deal and, and finish your work for them. So I'm drawn more to that work because it's a little bit more high risk, high reward. Um, and I think naturally in sport, you are, uh, you are given the skill set to operate very well on that, those high risk, high rewards, higher stress environments. Um, so I would encourage everyone, you know, finance sounds meh, uh, and maybe not as exciting as some other things, but it's, uh, there's a ton of careers out there that are very well suited to the skill sets that you build um, while on the field and on on the court. So, um, so keep that in mind. Yeah, well, teamwork's a big thing. Uh, you know, being a part of a team, having different categories that you have to to do. You know, putting together projects, trying to go win deals. You got to be able yeah. to bring something and and bring in other people that maybe do something better than you, and you do something better than them. So that's that's a yeah. huge deal that directly translates now. If you went back in time, you young Erica McGinnis, uh, going into her high school or you know middle of high school experience, what would what type of advice would you give her um, as she got ready? You know, I would imagine at a young age you just you knew you wanted to play basketball at the next level. Is that accurate? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I knew I wanted to play basketball in university. That was um, that. So was what what type of advice would you give young Erica McGinnis? Okay, and Steph gave me this question in advance, so I had some time to think about this. Um, <laughs> So I have four. I have four tidbits of advice I give myself. Uh, one would be to to celebrate some of the personal wins and personal achievements you have along the way. I think um, I think naturally with the season and team, there is um, there's chances to recognize those team successes, which is which is very important. Uh, but it's also from your own personal confidence um, building and. Uh, it's really important to recognize those advancements you weigh. So if you have set, set a little goal, a goal for yourself on, you know, being able to make this jump shot from the three pointer or, or whatever that goal may be, like when you achieve that, like give yourself that personal recognition of it and be proud. So that would be um, number one. Uh, number two would be, you know, recognize that there's going to be someone, uh, there's always going to be someone better than you. And there's always going to be someone that works hard, that harder than you. And, and use that to drive, uh, drive your practice, drive your performance, uh, and drive your commitment levels. I think sometimes when you're operating in, within your high school team, um, you can get to a point where maybe you feel very confident and you're, you're uh, one of the best players in your high school, uh, but think about those other girls in the province, think about those girls nationally that you've come up against um, and know that they're in the gym working hard uh, and getting better. Um, number three is you can always learn something from everybody. So anybody on your team is, is a good person to learn from. So you know, whether it's just there's a, an individual who high point, points the ball and is a better rebounder to you, or whether somebody has a really great uh, left-hand finish, um, watch them, watch your competitors, watch your teammates, and every individual out there is a, is a great person to learn from. Um, and then lastly, like I'd say, you really can do anything you put your mind to. Um, when I was in high school, I was 
labeled as uh, somebody that had a good shot, uh, who loved the ball, having the ball in my hands. I loved taking shots. Uh, I would take a lot of shots in the game, um, but I was slow and not good at defense. And that was something that I just accepted and just saying, well, you know, I'm, I'm not a good defender. Um, but when I went to university, that wasn't good enough anymore. And quickly I learned if I wanted to be on the court, I had to be good at both ends. And I made that as, and I'm a competitive person. So I just tried to get better at the defense end of the game. And then by my last year at university, I ended up winning defensive player of the year. So it was one of those, I didn't really, in high school, I just accepted it as something, you know, folks told me I had slow feet and I wasn't good at defense. Um, but I wish that I'd had that mindset to say, to take that on and say, well, well, yeah, that's something I can get better at and, and try and um, try and improve now instead of just accepting it. Fantastic. I mean, very good. Steph, do you have any other questions that we got on up? No? But I'm oh, I'm muted. No, I'm good. You're you're all you're all set. That was my one question. I just wanted to make. Sure I like it. it. I like it. Well, Erica, thank you so much for coming out and joining us tonight for a uh, for a quick interview. We really appreciate you taking the time out. Um, girls, let's give her a round of applause, please. <laughs> These are so funny. Thank you so much, Erica. Thank you so much for coming thank out. You. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for inviting me. Thank okay, you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.